everyone. Today we're in 1 Timothy 1 through 6. I got my Bible. Go grab yours and come join me. All right. Chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ our hope, to Timothy, a true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I urged you when I was in Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes, rather than godly edification which is in the faith. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith from which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. But we know that the law is good, if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, the ungodly, and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to the sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Although I was, I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. However, for this reason I obtained mercy, that in the first Jesus Christ might, might show all longsuffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Now to, now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, having faith and a good conscience, which some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck, of whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I deliver to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Therefore I exhort first of all the supplication, and I'm now in chapter two, so chapter two. Therefore I exhort first of all the supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between us, God and man, the man of Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in due time, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath, doubting, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with proprietary, with propriety and moderation, not with braided hair, gold, or pearls, or costly clothing, but which is proper for women professing godliness, godliness with good works. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission, and I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in the faith, love, and holiness with self-control. This is a faithful saying. Oh, chapter 3. This is a faithful saying. If a man desires a position of bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? 
Not a novice, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall to the reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with pure conscience. But let these also first be tested, then let them serve as deacons being found blameless. Likewise, likewise, their wives must be reverent, not slanders, temperate, faithful in all things. Let deacons be husbands of one wife, ruling their children with their own houses well. For those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. These things I write to you, though, I hope come to you shortly. But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to be conduct, how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Chapter 4. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own con conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good min you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the word of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' fables, fables, and exercise yourself towards godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. That is a faithful saying and a worthy of all acceptance. For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but an example to the believers in the word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, and that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in so doing, this you will say both yourselves and those who hear you. Chapter 5 Do not rebuke an older man, but exhort him as a father, younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters, with all purity. Honor widows who are really widows. But if any widow have, has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show pity at home and to pay for their parents, for this is good and acceptable before God. Now she who is really a widow and left alone trusts in God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. But she who lives in, a, in pleasure is dead while she lives. And these things command that they may be blameless. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Do not let a widow, widow under 60 years old be taken into the number, and not unless she has been the wife of one man, well reported for good works, if she has brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she has relieved the afflicted, if she has diligently followed every good work. But refuse the younger widows, for when they have begun to grow wanton against Christ, they desire to marry, having condemnation because they have cast off their first faith. And besides, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but also gossips and busybodies, saying things which they ought not to. 
Therefore, I desire the younger widows to marry, bear children, manage the house, give no opportunity to the adversary to speak reproachfully. For some have already turned aside after seeing. If any believing man or woman has widows, let them relieve them and do not let the church be burdened, that it may relieve those who are really widows. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of the wages, of his wages. Do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. Those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all, that the rest also may fear. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that you observe these things without prejudice, doing nothing with partiality. Do not lay hands on anyone hastily, no share, nor share in other people's sin. Keep yourself pure. No longer drink only water, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your frequent infirmities. Some men's sin are clearly evident, preceding them to judgment, but those of some men follow later. Likewise, the good works of some are clearly evident, and those that are otherwise cannot be hidden. Chapter 6 Let as many bondservants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, so that the name of God and His doctrine may not be blasphemed. And those who have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather serve them, because those who are benefited are believers and beloved. Teach and exhort these things. If anyone teaches otherwise, and does not count and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicion, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such, withdraw yourself. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed far from the faith in their greediness, and pierce themselves through many sorrows. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life, the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who witnessed a good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless until the Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and the only continent, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be the honor and everlasting power. Amen. Command those who are rich in the present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in certain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good, that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O oh, Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. By professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. Well, you guys, I appreciate y'all reading with me. Thank you so much and have a blessed day. Hello, friend, and welcome to Fear Into Faith. 
Global Bible Revival two-time award-winning TV show. I'm your host, Summer Day, and we're excited to have you. We're on a mission here to get one billion, that's right, with a B, one billion people to read God's word cover to cover in a year. In the studio with me today is Gabby Love. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome. Fans. You made it. You're here. Yes. And so far, what has the journey been like getting here today? Well, um, I went to, I actually drove to the wrong building. Yes, because we're in a new studio. <laughs> yes, and um, <laughs> you are I the... had a call. Like, I went to just, yeah, there was a door, it was locked, and I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe this is not what I'm yeah. supposed to be doing. Yeah. And so um, I called the producer, and he was very nice. And just was you like, are... 15 minutes, like, you're yeah. the first person being at our brand new studio space. So yes. And it's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank it. you. We're glad you're here. So it's a little cold. <laughs> so, <laughs> it is. But... It's a little cold in the studio today. <laughs> yeah. Tell everybody uh, where you're from. I am from Hickory Creek, Texas, which is just a suburb of Dallas, Texas. Awesome. awesome. And I've lived here. And I get country when I talk. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Let's, let's get really country. Not, I'm really not country. Come on, Gabby. Let's like get country. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I get country when I think about it. But anyway, I've been here, gosh, pretty much all my life. Born and raised um, in Dallas. I was actually born in Nicaragua. Monaco, born Nicaragua. in Nicaragua. Came here when I was five with okay, my go mom. like this with your hair. Okay, good. Awesome. Came here when I was five. And um, pretty much lived in Texas my whole life. So was your then. first language Spanish? Yes. Oh, so my okay. husband's first generation born here from Argentina. Oh, nice. He looks as white as they come. Uh -huh. And every once in a while, he'll just bust out in full Spanish because it was his first yes. language. Didn't learn it until he went to school. Right. That's exactly Love it. the same. And yes. you're married? Yes. Okay. I'm married. Been married for 12 years. Mom? And I'm a mom. I have wow. three kiddos. Love I have it. a daughter, 16 years old. So pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wait, wait. Mine's almost 16, too. So. Yeah. Yeah. So we can pray for that, each other. Know. Yeah. We don't really know. It's like a shaky ground right now. But oh. we're, we're getting there. But anyway, I have also two boys, six and nine, Love and it. they're just, they're precious, except when they fight and, and they want to eat all the food. do you do anything else besides mom? Yeah, I work full time. Where do you work? I work at um, like an auto collision repair and well, it's an auto collision repair, but I work at headquarters and I handle their development, real estate, leasing, things like that. And I'm just right now like bored because <laughs> I'm thinking as I look at you, Gabby, that was definitely what I was going to guess. I, I was going to guess that you worked in auto collision. Is that right. what you said? It's auto collision centers, keeping all our real estate <laughs> throughout the United States, you know, making sure like the centers are running well, making sure like the leases are up to date, things like that. And then we also have new construction. You are the first so, person on the show that does auto correction. I had not... Well, I don't do it, <laughs> but I do work on the legal document. So I'm part of the legal team. Okay. I probably should have started with that. <laughs> okay. I probably should have been like, that's hey, okay. I'm legal, but yeah. Anyways, I never thought I'd be in it either. So. Okay. So tell us, how did you end up in this chair today? How'd you hear about this project? Yeah. So I have a friend, Amy. Yeah. And so she told me about it. She's been my friend for 13 years. And she just was like, hey, there's a great opportunity. Like, do you want to, you know, come and read the mm -hmm. word, read the Bible? It's like Bible mm -hmm. in a year. And I was like, absolutely. Like, I listened to the Bible in a year on a Dwell app. Wow. And so I actually just finished last month. Love my it. husband and I. First time the whole year. Um, it was my second time reading it the whole way through or, or listening to it the whole way yeah. through. And so and I now was people like, are going to listen to you. I know. You're going to be I'm part so of an app and a yeah. TV show and somebody's going to listen to you. Yeah, Gabby. I know. So it's it's kind of crazy. And I was like, yeah, of course. Like, read the word. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I just hope I don't, you know, butcher anything. Like, so it, you funny. know, I just well, what sure made you say yes? Job. Um, so I have a lot of friends and, you know, family that are unbelievers and mm -hmm. that they don't, you know, know the Lord. Um, and they won't pick up a Bible and mm -hmm. read it. But it's really important, I think, that anyone can listen, anyone can stumble across, you know, this on YouTube, especially if they're searching and all unbelievers are, they're just searching for God mm. and they're going through different means to do it. Yeah. But I think if God's, you know, obviously God has a journey for them and he might lead them, you know, to this platform I love and you it. just never know and they can listen. They don't yeah. have to like pick it up and read it or, you know, feel like, yeah. They can just listen. And you know, you never know even what three seconds can do Amen. to someone and to their heart. And God can open them up and, you know, use them right there. I love it. So good. <laughs> so, yeah. so part of our vision for this project is getting Christian celebrities, influencers, stuff like that on the show. And we've had 
I think on our last day, we had a TikTok influencer. He's got 2 million followers. Mm -hmm. And it's for that exact reason, mm -hmm. because that person might not be picking up the Bible, but if they hear that that guy is reading or yeah. that he's on a TV show, they might tune in and they might just get some Jesus all over them. Exactly. So, I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yes. Great answer. Why do you think reading the word is important? Well, it's the inspired word of God. And honestly, like the Bible is a miracle. The fact that we have it here in 2024, like it's ancient literature. Yeah. And, you know, the way that it's the canon, the 66 chapters, like I know that people can say, oh, well, there's this chapter or interpretations are different, but it's like, absolutely not. Like, how did we get this book mm. in 2024? in Dallas like how is it you know in the homes of billions of people all around the world yeah and that's God you know keeping that contained and like it's obviously like the way to know him the mm -hmm. way to know Jesus mm -hmm. from you know front to finish it's the story of Jesus and the story of us like the story of why we're here yeah and you know why God made us and why he's like a lo our loving father and so I mean to me it's just I draw closer to God and when I open it, I feel that I'm in his presence and mm. it's just a relationship, you know, that I have with him and it's yeah. my own personal one. Nobody can take it from me. And, and so it's like, I rely on that book mm -hmm. kind of like bread, <laughs> like, you know what I eat. That's like, it sustains me on so my good. worst days. It sustains me. I'll go and I'll open it up and it's like, God's there. God meets me. It's exactly what I need. And then I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm like, you got this. <laughs> like you're in control. I'm yeah. not in control of my life. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I love it. it. I love it. And I just, I want everyone to know. I want everyone to be reading it. So good. Well, what do you think about this mission we're on to get a billion people to read the Bible? I love it. And you know what? I think that, I mean, it can be done. God's behind it. If God's behind it, it can be done. Like, every time, every, every time on this journey, that he's pushed me just a little bit. Cause I told you yeah. today it started where I did a Facebook live to find five friends and we've yep. gone from five friends. Would you please read the Bible with right. me to, okay, we're going to try to get a billion people. I know. But you know what? With this TV show, TV reaches billions of people. And so I am believing now, like, okay, I think God yeah. wants, I think God wants to do this because what else? will change the very fabric of the planet we live on in exactly. God's word. Exactly. In God's word. Yes. So excited. And the Bible, it says it'll be preached to all the worlds before Jesus comes. You know, the Bible, the world, the world will know, you know, they're not going to mm -hmm. have an excuse. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite book in the Bible? Um, I love Luke and I love, you know, pretty much all the gospels Yeah, um, where Jesus is speaking. Those are like my favorite. Why Luke specifically? Um, Luke has the story of, it's Luke 7, 4, well, it's Luke 7, but it has a story of the woman that she, there's a dinner that Jesus is at and she walks into the room. Um, she is a woman of the city, they call her. Mm. And so she's had like a pass and mm -hmm. she walks in and she's laying like under the table at Jesus' feet, yeah. crying. Yeah. Wa like pretty much washing yeah. his feet with her tears and I'm then gonna pause you right there <laughs> yeah we're gonna take our first break we'll be right back right after this uh -oh. you did it in a world where challenges echo one woman's resilience becomes a symphony of triumph jennifer's story is a spectacle of transformation abandoned and scared she rises turning pain into power this book is your guide with the tools she used. An epic narrative of hope, resilience, and breaking free. Breaking the Bonds, a book by author Jennifer Marcus. Available on Amazon. Welcome back, my friend. We are here with Gabby Love. And we're going to go right back to where you left off on scripture. And you were talking about um, you love Luke because there's a yes. woman. Yes. And she shows up. She shows Keep up. Going. She's the woman of the city. She comes in and starts washing Jesus' feet. She's literally crying, washing his feet with her tears and wiping mm -hmm. it with her hair. And the men around Jesus sitting at the table, they're all judging him because they're like, what are you doing letting this woman like touch you? Do you, do you even know who she is? And yeah. he's like, well, I came here. You invited me to your house. He's like, 
you didn't wash my feet. Mm -hmm. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but yet she can't stop, you know, kissing my feet, you know? And he's like, this woman loves much because she's been forgiven much. Mm -hmm. And those who love little have been forgiven little. Yeah. So that's always been something that's, you know, kind of been part of my story. Um, And he goes on to say like her sins are many, but they've been forgiven. Mm -hmm. And it's something that, you know, just kind of I keep on my heart because I know that I'm, you know, not been perfect. And yeah, we, none of us have, but um, just my story has gone through like a lot of, you know, difficulties. Yeah. And it's not always squeaky clean, but you know, I do resonate with that. (laughs) So, and I love that. And I love that God says that. Amen. He's saying that about me. So, yeah, that's good. I like that story too. Yeah. Have you ever had somebody wash your feet? Um, you know, other than like at a nail salon, at a spa, <laughs> is that washing your feet? You're kind of like in there, yeah. I but. had a friend. She works in uh, trafficking. She's amazing. We're raising money to get a safe house yeah. and different things. And we had a property, and she literally took me somewhere, washed my feet, and used her hair, just bawling my eyes out as just wow. like a symbol of of just the goodness of God Mm -hmm. and it's powerful. So I love that you mentioned that. Let's talk a little bit about a really important topic that maybe you don't want to share. And that is, is Gabby love your real name? Oh, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it is. Like, well, I got, you know, I Mary Did I set that up good. You were like, yeah. what is she going to ask me? Because it's a great name. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I married into the name. Oh, okay. So love so, your married name. Yeah. So name Did my... you literally meet him and you're like, wait, your name's what? And you're yeah. like, I have to marry I just, this guy. I, I need the last name love. <laughs> yeah, we actually met at, at a like corporate fitness center mm-hmm. and he was the manager. And so he had the, his name on the wall. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love that last name. And then the, you just <laughs> have this cute guy going in and out of the his office and stuff and then personal training people <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh so when I sat down with him because he wanted to offer me personal training even though like I didn't want it mm-hmm. <laughs> and I he was talking to me I was like oh I was like is that your real name is that your name because uh-huh. I also said that he's yeah. like yeah and he's like I love that awesome. that's awesome <laughs> what's his first name John John Love mm-hmm. so you saw John Love on the wall it was love at first sight of the name Yes, it was absolutely yes. And even like after that first conversation with him, some of my friends, well, it was a corporate fitness center. Mm -hmm. So we worked at a law firm. We went down, we used the gym and the girls that were with me, my coworkers, they were like, so when's the wedding? Stop it. Come on. I'm like, oh my gosh, you just met him. Like, what are you, like, what was I flirty? I wasn't trying to be flirty. Oh, that's funny. How long did you guys date before you got married? Um, A year and a half. Year and a half. Okay. Yeah. You took a little bit of time. I did. I actually had a daughter from a previous. So my my sixteen year old, she's from a previous marriage when I got married right out of high school. Mm-hmm. Very, very young. Mm-hmm. So um I had her when I was twenty. And, you know, didn't know that I was gonna marry this guy because we had a very like rocky mm-hmm. relationship. Mm-hmm. Um it was a toxic relationship, but um I was just in a stage of my life where I was like, hey, I was like, maybe this is a God thing. Mm. In my own, like, I was like, maybe God, this is what God wants. Yeah. And so I married him and, you know, discovered very quickly that. How long were you married? Um, Just a year. Just a year. And so, like. And so when you met John Love. You she was little, three. She my was daughter three. was so three. So you definitely needed to take a little more time. Oh, uh, yeah. Make sure that he was uh-huh. going to be the Did real deal. Did not want to introduce her to any any men at yeah. all so he was like the first guy mm. that I introduced her to at three and like yeah. he's been in her life this whole time wow. so she doesn't really remember anything yeah before that. what's your daughter's name Skylar Skylar Love mm-hmm. and no Skylar so her last name is Wix okay. so she has her Skylar Wix that's what we're doing. you can check out the rest of this interview right here or by going to biblerevival.tv And if this show has blessed you, you can help us bless others by partnering with us for as little as $20 a month and help us to expand the reach of this show. We'd also like to invite you to join our Kingdom Discipleship Program, where you have an opportunity to get on weekly Bible Zoom calls with us and people around the world to deep dive into His Word. And you can check all that out at BibleRevival.tv. I'll see you next time, my friend.